Well, the next generation was still cruising along in their, their starship, you know. And uh, they decided to go look for a legendary world of Magrathea. <laughs> no, not that one. This one was called Aldea. And, well, wouldn't you know it, they found it. Uh, turns out uh, the reason it was hard to find is because the planet had cloaked itself. But upon the Enterprise's arrival, they decided to decloak and uh, make contact. So, wow, this is a big deal. Uh, this, uh, you know, they found Atlantis, you know, practically. Um, well, despite all the super duper pooper scooper advanced technology that they possessed on that planet, uh, the people were actually not that bright. Uh, they were completely dependent on, yes, you guessed it, a super duper pooper scooper computer. Uh, this is sort of, a, again, another callback to previous plots where a computer was behind it all uh, in some society uh, where it was kind of like God to the people and this sort of thing. Not necessarily a God to them, but they were completely dependent on it. A previous generation uh, ancestors to these people had constructed this. Uh, and, uh, well, it, it, uh, miraculous abilities and everything, and very powerful, more powerful than what uh, the Federation had. They, uh, they get mad at the Enterprise and knock it a, a three days away's journey, even at maximum warp. <laughs> uh, but the, the whole thing was a, was a, was a trap. Uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to take uh, some children from the Enterprise, because everyone on Aldea is mysteriously sterile. And also, uh, they're hiding it from the Enterprise crew, but uh, eventually uh, Crusher, with a little help from Will, who got uh, abducted by them, was to get some samples, and she discovered they're all dying. They've all got degenerative diseases and whatnot. Uh, and they trace it to the problem of the shielding that they had with the cloak and everything uh, turned the atmosphere toxic towards them uh, and uh, damaged their ozone layer. Of course, at the time, Fear of the ozone layer uh, evaporating uh, was one of those things that no one talks about anymore. But at the time, oh boy, uh, compounded with global warming and everything. Uh, so uh, th this is filtered into this story, but it's uh, more credible to this to this science fiction fantasy <laughs> because of the massive power that uh, the, this technology generated. So. And, of course, it was always a problem uh, because even Will said, well, what are you going to do if it breaks down? And they're like, what do you mean? It never breaks down. None of them knew how it worked or how to fix it or anything like that. Most of them were just interested in music and art, you know. Yeah. Well, those things are nice, but, um, well, you can't eat them. So, uh, <laughs> so that's the deal. They take the children uh, you know, and the parents on the ship are all upset, and uh, Picard's trying to negotiate this thing because, well, <laughs> they're more powerful than than the Enterprise. Uh, but eventually, they figure out how to out outfox them, and they realize there's a way to get through their shielding when they're transporting uh, people from the ship to their uh, complex, and uh, uh, Riker is able to beam in there uh, into their their power room. Uh, well, our was well, actually it's massive or you know appeared to be and uh they're able to shut it off and then they're like oh no <laughs> and uh so they tell them, look uh we'll work something out here but see you're all sick with this terrible uh, degenerative disease and uh dr crusher thinks he can treat you and oh, over time you you might even regain your ability to stop shooting blanks and have your own kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, but that's the deal, uh, being isolated and whatnot. But, of course, uh, the, the, there's another problem about the, the super-duper-pooper-scooper technology falling into the wrong ends could also be a problem. But uh, as far as I know, they never revisited it. Uh, but, anyway, they said, oh, gee, sorry about the kidnapping, and they returned the kids. Now, uh, most of the kids... Uh, they did have an ability to discover what they were good at, and again, it was mostly, well, art, music and art and stuff. One of them's a sculptor, the other, this little girl can do music, stuff like that. And Well, that's nice, but uh, apparently their parents were unaware of these abilities, and actually, there's one kid who's in trouble at school, and the dad, you know, uh, rebukes, rebukes him, or, you know, admonishes him, and he's like, eh, so he's kind of more 
in the mood to stay there, you know, because they discovered his talent for art. But, of course, uh, well, he misses Dad and wants to be home. So, of course, they get back together, and, and uh, you know, he didn't want to study calculus, but the dad said, look, you can pursue your, your artistic talent, but you still got to take calculus. Aww! <laughs> Run along now, you little scamp. And there you go. So, uh... <laughs> It's an all right episode. It wasn't great. Uh, some of the performances, well, uh, and uh, boy, the the music on the show, especially in this case, uh, you know, with oh how angelic the kids are and all this type of stuff is a little, little too much sweetness. <laughs> it's enough to put you in diabetic shock. So there, there is that. But you know, all all the the concepts and whatnot, and that. The, you know, it, 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 it's another repetitive thing. I mean, it's sort of like all the way back to the cage where the Telosians wanted a new race to come in and carry on their their people, which wouldn't really carry on their people. But uh, So they were going to leave this to these kids. Problem was, the kids would suffer the same maladies uh, in that environment. But uh, the people, despite all their advanced technology, were so very stupid. They didn't know how to operate any of it. It's kind of like what's going to happen with neural links and the, the phones, and nobody's going to be around to know how to fix them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, you know, it's all right. I guess I've seen worse, but, you know, what are you going to do? So then uh, they keep on trucking, you know, and uh, they, they check up on a colony. Uh, that are terraforming uh, a planet. And some of this I thought was a bit of a misstep in the sense that, you know, Riker's like, wow, I've never seen a terraforming operation. And I'm like, really? I would have thought that would be a constant thing, you know, uh, from centuries by now, by the time you get to their, uh, their era. Uh, and he's just so fascinated with it, you know. <laughs> and the planet just looks, you know, like a desert. Uh, but they, you know, they're hard at work at it, but suddenly they're all very nervous about something and they kind of don't want the Enterprise to to, to, to investigate. Well, just leave us alone, you know, we're good. And Picard's like, no, wait a minute, we've come a long way. And so they go down and then a murder is committed by an automated laser system. And they're like, what's going on? And it looks like, oh, is there some... Was there a murder? Did somebody kill this guy? And it, you, know, you almost are led to believe that. Uh, and in some instances, they're kind of reacting like the place is haunted or whatnot. And technically it is, but it's haunted by indigenous life forms that are uh, a different form of life that uh, we are unfamiliar with. Now, of course, back again to the old show, uh, you had the devil in the dark story, you know, with the thing that looked like a, you know, one of those little pizza burger things that used to serve at school. <laughs> But it was a silicon-based life form. They hadn't considered that. And so uh, here was yet another sort of crystal-like uh, entity. Uh, with, no, not that one, although it ends up kind of looking like, hey, this could be <laughs> a cousin to the crystalline entity. You know, uh, you don't want to mess with that. Uh, and uh, But it, it was able to infiltrate uh, the computers and whatnot uh, of the, the, the colony base. And then uh, they, they beam it above board of the Enterprise, and, well, then it takes over the Enterprise, you know. And they're like, oh, no. But they figure out if you turn the lights off, uh, it grows weak. It needs light. And they're like, oh, no. So uh, it's able to uh, communicate with them through the computer and uh, through the translator and whatnot, uh, although somewhat broken. But it does refer to human beings as ugly bags of mostly water. <laughs> And sometimes, boy, does that hit the spot. <laughs> so they're really pissed because they feel these invaders have shown up and were killing them because they were uh, searching for water, you know, and they were taking their water, um, which they needed to form their species. Apparently, they're like cells in an overall body or, you know, within the, I forget, you know. But <laughs> you, you get the idea. It, it was it was damaging to them. So they struck back. So you, you can't really say, hey, these little bastards co committed murder. But then you had already murdered who knows how many of them. So even though they came to an understanding, they were like, yeah, we want you to leave. <laughs> they said, maybe in 300 years, well, uh, we'll want to speak to you again, but right now we're not so sure about you guys. So, 
Uh, they kind of like Picard, but everybody else, no. I mean, you know, certainly the colonists and whatnot. So, you know, conceptually, um, it's strong. And I've always thought that, even though I was harsh on the early seasons of Next Generation. Uh, I always held that their sci-fi concepts were pretty strong. And so this one, uh, it, it, of course, again, it's a, a, a retread of earlier things, but still... It, it, it speaks to a truth. How do we know? Just because we're basing what possible life could exist outside, uh, you know, our 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 little speck of dust in the in the stars, um, uh, it could be something else we've never even considered. Uh, and so that's kind of the approach to this. Uh, instead of just a bunch of guys with rubber foreheads and that kind of thing, you know. So. Well, that's the deal, and of course, to give them protection, the Federation will uh, quarantine the area so people will leave it alone. Of course, that's the Federation again. Uh-oh, what if someone else shows up? It's kind of the same situation with uh, Aldea, with all that technology there. What well, if the Klingons went in there and said, hey, we're just going to take this crap? And uh, and they do, and then, uh-oh, now you're they're massively uh, outgun you and all that. Uh, and here, uh, a whole new war could start out with these crystalline entities that can take over ships and stuff. Suddenly, you've got fleets of ships that dared to enter uh, their their world, you know, running around and saying, we need to go on the offense and just wipe out everybody else, and that kind of thing could happen. Uh, so, boy, better better maintain that, uh, that quarantine. But it also is similar to Talos. You know, they had to uh, quarantine that planet because... Well, what if everybody learned how to use their power of illusion? And that would be a powerful weapon, too. So, man. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of planets that just have the, uh, you know, the detour signs floating around them and uh, the, 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 the police tape, you know? You, know, you can't go in here. <laughs> and for good reason, you know? So, uh, so, you know, this is another example of things out of these shows that, well, you know, you could revisit it in another show, but, well, wouldn't want them to do it now, huh? Because even though this show, eh, it's all right, I guess. It wasn't didn't wow me all that much. And, I mean, eh, the alien entity, it, it looks like a firefly, you know? Hey, what's this glowing thing in this jar? It's a firefly. <laughs> Their asses glow. <laughs> Uh, but no, no, no. It was something far more serious. So anyway, uh, revisiting it and all that, yeah, it could. But um, yeah, they'd, they'd mess it up. So anyway, there you go. That's two episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Kind of weak, but but all right. You know, it didn't annoy me or anything. Well, there was one scene where this woman who was struggling to act but never really sealed the deal... And it was almost as if she was waiting for Riker to kiss her because they had kind of like a moment. And he just gets up and walks out. <laughs> I don't know if that's what that was supposed to be or what, but it it sure looked like it. And she's like, I, what? <laughs> and, you know, she was a pretty girl. But uh, I don't know. I didn't do it for Riker. Not this time. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, there you go. Uh home soil and when the bow breaks mm, mm, or bow something i forget all right see you next time